B3-12. We're going to create the two shapes. There's not really any advantage to doing a little little notch out or any of the um, other potential shapes if we were to do the uh, the rectangle. Then the main choice is where do we put our uh, put our shape. So probably looking at the uh, the geometry, I don't know that I would create the uh, the L shape and then try to cut all of this off. Really, what I see are two shapes: the rectangular on the back and kind of the tombstone on the uh, the front. So this is our. Just need that one. Uh, metric template. And on the front plane, we'll open up the sketch. I think for convenience, we'll put the origin in the bottom right. Let's, um, let's see, that flew out just a little too far. Um, as we expand out and start to use more of the commands, right mouse button and then the sketch entities, you can go to circles that way. And let's put a few dimensions on this before it gets too far away. So auto scaling. When I put the uh, the first dimension on, it will kind of bring everything into the, the same scale. And diameter of 16, that looks a little small. I almost want to say that should be a radius, but we will go with the diameter of 16. And from its, uh, from its position, it's saying uh, 24. Uh, 12 in two places, so kind of a chain dimensioning thing going on, that we have the 13 at the base, and then 12. So this kind of lends itself, I really want to draw that tombstone shape, this kind of lends itself to at least putting some construction geometry into this uh, this sketch to uh, to help build it out. All right, so I meant to make that a construction. I can always uh, come over to the property manager and check for construction or right click and the second row, second item in will be to switch it to construction geometry. Maybe, there it goes. All right, so we can put our dimensions in. And so 13 at the base, 12 to the center of the hole. and 12 to the center of the hall. All right, so that's where my oversight came in was I need to make that 30. And then I'm going to right click and select midpoint. And you can always draw center lines, you can dimension. There's uh, different ways I'm building in the design intent that this will um, will stay centered on the um, on that face. So my feature, extrude, and I do want to reverse the direction on this one. And that's going to put the origin kind of inboard at the intersection of the two shapes. And then our thicknesses, now the back isn't called out, so assuming the thickness is the same, 13. All right, then I can open up a sketch in the front plane. I'm sorry, the top plane. I got the front plane on the mind. And I'm going to go ahead with the tombstone shape. All right, to the center is 35. And we'll get that roughly in position. And then from the back, our overall is 43. Okay. And then if I go into a tangent arc, I'll be able to pull that geometry. And I don't really want to get rid of the uh, left side of the rectangle. So again, I'll just switch it to construction geometry. All right. And then we generated that sketch, that location in the, uh, the first sketch. So if I show that sketch, I'll be able to highlight that geometry. Uh, let's see, we can go ahead and put the, um, the hole in as well. Let's get a uh, 
diameter of 13. Okay, and if I were to put the radius of 15 in, notice it's going to be a driven dimension. And if I just want to see it or have it for, for reference, they can leave that driven dimension. I just can't edit it. So features, extrude, and now I'm going to up to vertex. All right, so I can pick that sketch point, and now that first sketch drives that depth of the 12. Since this is a chain dimension, the 13, 12, and 12, if that had to shift and it affected downstream, I would be able to see it in one sketch. I do want to go back and hide that sketch so I have the geometry. So at this point I have one solid body. This is a good example where I, I want to be careful that I do not uncheck the merge result because as soon as I uncheck that merge result now I have solid body one and it is included but it is a separate item from uh, boss extrude two or the second solid body. All right, and there are times where we'd want to do that, that I want to illustrate that we're making two components there and that uh, they'll be bolted together or something, but we're not making it. I, my company, my organization is not making it, so as a purchase part, I really don't want to treat this as an assembly or detail it any other way than just to say, I want to see that separation there. I want to know that it has that, um, um, that geometry. All right, so I'm going to go back and merge the result. And if there's any gaps, if there was something in the, uh, the sketch that left a gap, then I would automatically get that second solid body, and that would be an indicator that I need to go back and check the sketch. All right, so we need to save that. And on to the next.